Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to explore this place on that trip. I think we drove past it, though. Mm -hmm. I vaguely remember being like, oh, like, what the fuck is that cool building? And the answer to that question would have been the Driscoll Hotel. (gasps) Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Cassie. Hi, creepy people. Hello. If you are new to our creepy corner of the world, this is PNW Haunts and Homicides, where we chat about true crime, paranormal, and all things creepy in the Pacific Northwest, most times. Mo- mostly. We also do a tarot reading at the end for deeper insight into our topic for the episode. So make sure to stick around if you're into that kind of that kind of stuff, if you like that. And if you don't like it, you can just listen to us be weird. Yeah. That's fun, too. That also happens. (laughs) As most of you probably know, we just went to Austin, Texas. We did. What was it for, Caitlin? For True Crime and Paranormal Podcast Festival. It's a mouthful, but you did it. I, I think. It was amazing, wouldn't you agree? Yes. It was also very moist. Very moist, yeah. Sorry for anyone who's... Currently cringing. (laughs) Moist. Very humid there. Yes, it is. I don't know how a place manages to be the same temperature as the surface of the sun, but also still just fucking damp everywhere. I don't know. I don't know. It is a natural phenomenon. It really is. (laughs) I think it's a paranormal phenomenon. (laughs) It might be. Yeah. Apparently Texas is... Pretty damn haunted. I believe that. Did you know that our last day of that trip, it was the hottest that it had been on that date of the year since like 1902? Yeah, I think I think I heard. (laughs) (laughs) I think we both heard that and we've parroted it back. I heard from the guy at the pool that we met. Hi, (gasps) if you're listening. Oh, by the way, you said guy at the pool that you were going to listen. Yeah. So you better be listening. Better be. We know where to find you. Yeah. I don't remember your name. (laughs) I was like, I'm going to remember your name. Yeah. Shout you out. And I forgot. I'm I'm so sorry. Listen, it was really hot. We had some drinks. We were in a pool. We were pretty sure that (laughs) we thought we would remember. And here we are. We remembered the fun fact. Yeah, we did. About the weather. So we're telling everyone that. (laughs) Well, we did a bunch of cool things there, including meeting so many of our pod friends. Oh, my gosh. It was amazing. It was. Like seeing, I say it so many times, but seeing people in real life that you've only seen in a computer screen. Yeah. is just like surreal. It really is. Um, God, I'm trying to think of like, how do you even abbreviate? You know, just like really quick, like we met so-and-so and so-and-so and and the list just keeps fucking going. Um, It was really nice to meet Lainey in person. She's the organizer, one of the organizers of the event. She's amazing. Yeah. We met Josh from True Crime Bullshit. We met um, our BFFs from A Nefarious Nightmare. Yes. That was so funny when they walked up. I don't know if anyone else saw my face, but I was like, oh my God. I I know. I know you. I know them. Yeah. Who else did we meet? Navigating advocacy. Yeah. We had a really good mini tarot reading with them. Very emotional. Yeah. Um, and I know some people were pretty excited that we also met Bob Mata from yeah. Defense Diaries. Yep. We met him for sure. It did come up. That did come up. Um, let's see who else. Oh, of course, I'm forgetting the two people that we like met from. First, really, um, Nina from Already Gone and Justin from Generation Y. Yes, they were yeah. on the panel with us. Yeah. They were on the panel with us. Yeah, they were on <laughs> it with us, not us on it with them. Get yep, it straight. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We really appreciate them carrying yes. us through. Yeah. 
Well, um, we, there are so many people that we met. It's crazy, but yeah. we'll just go ahead and just add the whole list to the show notes of everyone right. that we met. <laughs> <laughs> we met dot, 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 dot. It's like the thank you speeches and you just like forget to thank everyone. <laughs> I know. Seriously. We met so many cool people. So the festival was cool. By far the coolest, but we did do some other pretty cool things. Yeah. We went to the Wonder Spaces Museum. The fucking coolest thing that I've done in a long time. So cool. You guys have seen by now videos and pictures. Reels and TikToks yeah. and pictures and all of it. Shout out to the bartenders that we met there. Oh my God. They were amazing. They were so sweet. We ended up giving them mini tarot reads um, and they loved it. So, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Yeah. I think we had some of the best food that we've ever had in Texas. I think so too. I know that when we ate at the barbecue place, yes. um, we, I think each not collectively because we had to come to our own realization individually, but we had to like push ourselves away from the table. Like I'm going to die if I stay here. <laughs> yeah, I could have easily just died happy in that place. Seriously, I wish that along with the other goodies that we're packing up for some of the Patreon with their little cards and um, some of you guys were sending out tarot readings and stuff. I wish that we could somehow magic some of that barbecue to you guys because it was so fucking good. The sauce just bathed me in that. I don't even know what it was. It was amazing. I know. (laughs) And what I really want to know is why the fuck have I never had corn casserole before? Why is that not a thing here? Mm. Corn casserole. Oh my God. Bury me with it. Mm. Okay. Well, we're going to have to go back. Yeah. (laughs) Obviously. And I need to find a good corn casserole recipe. So if (laughs) anybody has one, please send it. (laughs) Are you from Texas? Let us know about your corn casserole. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. We also couldn't leave the state without doing something creepy. It's true. (laughs) We sure did. So we visited the Museum of the Weird. I'm pretty sure is the official name. I kept calling it Museum of Weird, but I think there's a the in there. Okay. (laughs) I mean, it's as advertised, I feel. It's very weird. Yeah. So as you can imagine, the Museum of Weird was packed, jam-packed full of weird shit everywhere. Little mummy dudes, head things, bats head thing? I don't know. There was like little, you know, little shrunken heads. <laughs> there were just like heads everywhere. Yeah. There were, they have a Texas Bigfoot, yeah. which I need to read that sign in detail. Uh-huh. But that was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Specifically a Texas Bigfoot. Yeah. Cause they're different. They're, I assume bigger. <laughs> I, I don't know. We got to read the sign. Yeah. They have like alien Things. They also had a wax museum. They had, what was it? The man in the ice, the ice man. Mm-hmm. They had a literal mm-hmm. freezer I don't, with a hairy man in a block of ice. See, listen, usually when someone ends up in a freezer, that's kind of more my genre, I think. Yeah. And I was deeply uncomfortable. Yeah. I didn't like it. I, I they scared. found him like that. I mean, not yeah. in the freezer, I assume, but in the ice. <laughs> in the ice. Yeah. So, Just to clarify. Well, obviously, we got a ton of information about some places in Texas with some paranormal activity. What? Yeah. Caitlin knows. She took the photos for me. I know, <laughs> but I tried so hard not to read them. I was like looking at the signs and zooming in and like trying to make sure all of the text was focused yeah, so that you'd be able to find this stuff later. But it was perfect. I was really trying hard not to read it though. Do you have any idea how hard it is for someone to like (laughs) (laughs) focus in on text and not read it? Yeah. Well, the one I chose has a shit ton of information. It was like the biggest sign and there was a lot of stuff on there. So, oh boy, we're going to talk about that. What is it? I don't know. What's in the box? (laughs) Did you guys like my what's in the box? What's in the box? So since Austin is Portland's unofficial sister city, (gasps) you know, keep us both weird and all. Ooh, 
I figured it wasn't even too much of a stretch to cover one of those places today. No. And it also happens to be on 6th Street, which is where the Museum of Weird is. Wait, it's actually on the same street as the museum? Wait, what? Yes. Shut the front door. Yeah. Did and we go there? No, but we're gonna what? talk we're gonna talk about it. Oh. We might go next time we go, yeah. but let me tell you this whole story and then we can decide. Oh boy. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to explore this place on that trip. I think we drove past it though. Mm-hmm. I vaguely remember being like, oh, like what the fuck is that cool building? And the answer to that question would have been the Driscoll Hotel. <gasps> Oh, do you? Okay, so look it up. Okay. Oh, we totally did. We were totally like right there. But we were just like, oh, looking at like, oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? So it kind of just like faded into the back of my mind until I saw a picture of it. I was like, oh, shit. (laughs) Oh, my gourd. It really stands out. It really, really does. We will post pictures. Oh, she pretty. But this is just a really great shot of it. And there's a really cute little vintage car in front of it. Yeah. This is from the hotel's like actual website. Yeah. So, oh my gourd. I keep saying oh my gourd. But it's spooky season. Yeah. Say it all spooky season. We don't care. The hotel started being built on Murica Day. Murica Day. The 4th of July, if you didn't know. In 1885. It held its grand opening the next year on December 20th, 1886. And it looks like it's from the 1800s. It really does. Yeah. Although it wouldn't have surprised me if you said it was even older than that. Yeah. Like if you said it was like 1786, I probably would have been like, okay. The hotel is still open and operational as a hotel to this day, which I feel like is kind of rare. Yeah. I'm literally looking at their booking website right now. I'm going to go see what availability they have. I feel like it's slightly on the spendy side. Yeah. kind of. She kind of <laughs> looks like she's a... She's a high dollar. Yes. Hotel. I mean, for a 137-year-old, she's charging a lot. Yeah. It definitely has had some renovations, but still has a very vintage feel. Yeah. It's an extremely fancy pants place. They have afternoon tea. If that tells (gasps) you anything. Stop it. So if we ever go there... I'm going to feel extremely uncomfortable unless I just like pretend that I'm that fancy. Yeah, just pretend to be fancy, Cassie. This literally looks like the inside of the Titanic. Yeah, it does. Yeah, very like regal vibes. She a bougie bitch? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it takes up a whole block. And when it opened, it was said to be, quote, one of the finest hotels in the whole country. Ooh. The entire cost of the hotel was estimated to be $400,000. That's it? In 1886 money. Okay, but still. Today, it's $13,008,127.66. That's like the value of it? Holy yeah. shit. That's the, the translation oh, of oh, the oh, money. I don't know what the hotel... How much it would cost. Okay, yeah. yeah. yeah I don't that know what the hotel sense. is worth. Probably... Maybe a lot more than that. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Let's buy it. <laughs> yes. You guys, we're starting a a fundraiser. Join our Patreon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we will have a hundred dollar a month tier and yeah. it's gonna be called buying the Driscoll. <laughs> yeah. I like that. You can be in on it. We'll let yeah. you stay for free. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so cool. So who the flippin' heck has that much flippin' lettuce? (laughs) Well, that would be, are you ready for this? Probably not, but let's do it. Colonel Jesse Driscoll. Colonel. (laughs) Originally from Tennessee, he ended up as a Texas cattle baron. Oh. Which I was like, is that just fancy talk for a cowboy? No. But it's not. It's not. No. (laughs) So I had to look it up. They're sometimes called cowmen. Oh. A cattle baron owned multiple ranches. So he's kind of like a cow CEO. Yeah. Yeah. Like just casually having all of the cows. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) That was him. Colonel Jesse Driscoll. Jesse Driscoll. (laughs) Sorry for the really bad uh, Southern accent that's going to slip out in this episode. 
I don't know. Sounded sounded about right to me. Colonel Driscoll always managed to find immense fortune, but it never lasted. Oh. Financial ruin befell him thrice before Whoa. arriving in Austin. Yikes. Getting intense. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> the first time was because the Confederate Army said, where's the beef? And Colonel Driscoll was like, it's here. I have some. It's right here. <laughs> so now we know a little more about Mr. Jesse here. He sold beef to the Confederates. Oh. And I feel like everything that follows feels like slightly cursy to me. So oh. you can be the judge. Oh, boy. I totally learned something new that I was probably told in school, but didn't retain. And I always assume Caitlin knows everything. <laughs> uh, listen, that's a <laughs> lot of pressure. <laughs> you might know this, though. OK. But just in case anyone else didn't know, the Confederacy had its own money. Oh, I think I did know that. I had no idea. I mean, it makes yeah. sense. They were like, yeah, we're not really wanting to hang out with you guys. So like, we're going to make our own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So all those sweet dollar dollar bills that our friend Colonel JD made selling his meat to the Confederacy turned out to be completely worthless, worthless. after the war. <laughs> I don't want to laugh, wah, but wah. <laughs> um, hopefully he <laughs> wrapped up that meat real good. <laughs> But they did give him one thing, at least, an honorary title of colonel. Oh. So that's why I'm kind of not being super respectful, because he's not even a uh, real colonel. Also, like, OK, so first of all, it's honorary mm -hmm. and it's honorary by uh, an army that no longer exists. Uh, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was, I think, I, and I'm going to go out on a limb here, maybe this is a wild stance to have, but like the one that was on the wrong side of history also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A yeah. little bit. A little bit. So I don't know. All of the articles and things refer to him as Colonel. So I just, I rolled with it, Good assuming Lord. that he kept the title. <laughs> okay. So fast forward, he rebuilt his bank account back up another two times, finally deciding he wanted to quote, Build the grandest hotel in the South. And that is a quote from the sign at the museum. Oh, all righty. Yes. I did take a lot of my info from that sign. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of really good information there. So remember how I said I would feel a little out of place at the Fancy Pants Hotel? Mm -hmm. As it turns out, most people in the area at the time felt kind of the same way. Oh, no. <laughs> the town of Austin became the state capital in 1872, 14 years before the Driscoll opened, but it still apparently had that Wild West feel yeah. at that point. Needless to say, the hotel was far too expensive for anyone in town to stay at. And I don't think anyone really had a reason to travel there yet since it wasn't developed. They didn't even have a capital building yet. That makes sense. Okay. He was just slightly ahead of his time with this one, I think. And yeah. it didn't help matters that a lot of his staff was apparently poached by another hotel. <gasps> oh, no. Yeah. Which is like, Man. well, but, maybe they should have made it the Capitol building. Yeah, maybe they should. I don't have. know. Like, how big does your Capitol building need to be? But it's interesting you say that. <gasps> uh, I'm not going to get into it right away, but we'll talk okay. about it in a minute. Yeah. A whole six months after it opened, the Driscoll closed. Oh, no. Temporarily. Oh, obviously, because okay. I said it was still open. I was like, it's still open. <laughs> what? Uh, I confused. I can't keep up. In 1888, the hotel reopened with Driscoll's brother-in-law as the new owner. In the same year, the colonel lost 3,000 of his cattle, <gasps> taking with them the rest of his money. Shite. So he lost his fortune. The fourth time. Okay, so uh, I thought it was thrice. It was What's... thrice before Austin. God damn. Yeah. Okay. Wow. In one last effort to regain his wealth, oh, Jesse, 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 he bet the only thing he thought he had left in a poker game, his namesake hotel. But luck was a fickle mistress. 
for Driscoll. Oh, no. <laughs> he lost. Yeah. I guess uh, that mistress knew that uh, you were never leaving your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God damn. So he lost the extremely high stakes game of poker. And later that same year, he lost his life <gasps> from a stroke. Wow. I honestly have no idea if he even was able to bet the hotel because it sounds like his brother-in-law owned it. Oh my. Okay. So I thought he, I thought he lost it in a poker game to his brother-in-law. That's kind of what I thought too. But like reading but through that's not the case. all of the timelines and things, it sounds like his brother-in-law <laughs> had it in 1888. What a dick. He's like betting a hotel that isn't like even two years his? after. Yeah. In 1890. <laughs> Jesus. So, I mean. Get it together, <laughs> Jesse. So I was kind of thinking maybe his death wasn't so natural if he owed someone a $13 million hotel. Oh, she is. There's nothing saying that. There's nothing pointing any fingers to anyone else. They say it's a stroke, but uh -huh. I don't know. Just a little, I like a little conspiracy theory in my yeah. story. So the Driscoll went on to flourish and President Lyndon B. Johnson. I know, I know it's not FDR, but you know, we'll take what we can get. LBJ. So LBJ and his future wife, Lady Bird, Lady had their Bird. first date there. Oh my God. I crash. Know. Isn't it so cute too? We were looking at. Um, where to watch all of the bats fly out from under the bridge yeah. and the bridge that it's on is Lady Bird Lake. Aww. I know. Wait, like, oh. the bridge that it's on is Lady Bird Lake? <laughs> the lake that the bridge goes over is Lady Bird Lake. Yeah. I can talk. I was like, oh man, she's going to feel like when she listens to that later, she's going to be like, what the fuck, Cassie? Were you stoned <laughs> again, you bitch? Probably. You bitch. And later... He would also await two presidential election results in the Jim Hogg suite at the hotel. Oh. I right. guess it's like a Jim Hogg of a suite. I don't know yeah. who Jim Hogg is, I, but. I, I feel like, should we look him up? Because I'm like, oh. We can. <laughs> I mean, we will. Oh, he was a governor of Texas. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It was the fancy pants room. Yeah, he was an American lawyer and statesman and also a governor from Texas. Well. Enough with the history, I think. <laughs> Did you forget? I want to do a history <laughs> podcast. <laughs> We're a ghost podcast. So halfway through the episode, let's get to the ghosts. Okay. <laughs> it's just so much fun to talk about history. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it, it sets you up. Definitely. You, you got to know all this stuff. We'll start small. Literally. People report hearing a child's laughter. God damn it. <laughs> feel phantom little handies oh. on them. That reminds me of the time I talked about something touched me and I thought it was a kid. <laughs> like, I feel like you just know. And people even see a little girl running around and playing with a ball. Like, of course, she was playing with a ball. They're all playing with a goddamn ball. These reports are mostly from one area around the hotel. The Grand Staircase. Oh, God. I know. There's a reason for it. Yeah. I can see the writing on the wall. Yeah. As it were. <sighs> Eek. They say this little girl that people see, hear, and feel is the spirit of a senator's daughter who tragically passed away on the staircase chasing her ball. Oh. I know. One of the sources claimed this happened during a special function at the hotel in 1887. And according to the hotel's website timeline, there was an inaugural ball in January of 1887. Oh, shit. So I wow. think it's kind of possible that it's true. Wow. Hey, man, your party sucks. <laughs> I know. Oh. Like, oh, that's just, it's so sad. That's terrible. What comes after the creepy kid ghost? Any guesses? I, um... No. There's a lot of possibilities. I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to give you ideas. <laughs> People have seen a fully decked out ghostly bride in the windows above 6th Street. Oh, my God. I was literally just thinking because you've lied to me before about haunted places. <laughs> yeah. And it had to do with my engagement. And like, <laughs> I was okay with that after a time. But 
Now I'm mad at you again. <laughs> I semi lied to you about Silver Falls being haunted. Yeah. We learned a few things. I. Mm. <laughs> the story is that she was rejected in some way by her groom and she took her own life in one of the rooms. Oh, like, no. Girl, he's not worth it. Yeah. He's not worth it. Oh, that's so sad. I know back then, like, women really needed yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, you, and it makes me sad. Your husband was your livelihood in a way that just doesn't really translate to the modern yeah. definition of marriage. I definitely don't get it. Yeah. I wish it wasn't that way in those times. I like to think we're in better times now and people will just be like, well, fuck you. I can find better. Yeah. Because you can. If you're listening, you can. Yeah. Literally, I could have another one of you in a minute. So love you, babe. To the left, to the left. <laughs> Thank you. Next. Yes. OK. There is a story of some guests who were on a late night shenanigan in an area of the hotel that was closed due to renovations. Oh, yeah. So definitely fuck around and find out about that. I mean, I feel like that's not something we would ever do. I mean, no, we wouldn't. We would never shenanigan late at night I mean, in a late closed at area. Night is one thing. <laughs> when it's under construction? Yeah, I guess you know the safety hazards. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do don't it. Don't do it. Especially, I was just watching that show I was telling you about, Light as a Feather. Ah! There's a construction zone mishap. Don't. That's not really a spoiler, but... yeah. I just, I just picture that whenever I have to go out to a job site yeah. and I'm just there to like record a meeting. Like freak accidents are yeah. just my biggest fear. It's why I'm not a huge risk taker. <laughs> yeah. No. Did you? I mean, the stuff that I have seen on construction sites, I'm like, oh, what you guys doing? Oh, oh, you're just drilling down into the earth. Uh, OK, just That's below my hole. feet. OK, <laughs> That's that's fine. So don't do this, everybody. I wrote after that, super safe. <laughs> mm, soup safe. But they apparently weren't the only ones there. They saw another woman, her arms full of shopping bags, heading down the hall. She stopped in front of a room for a bit before the women ask if she minds the construction. And she responds to them that she doesn't mind. Oh. Uh, what? She's just a person. I Is she? <laughs> For what, is she? <laughs> for whatever reason, they both suddenly feel really uneasy and get the fuck out of there. <laughs> yeah. The staff confirmed that no one was staying up there. There's not even a toilet in that room. What was that? Ghosts? Was that the smoke alarm? What the fuck was that? Oh, God. Okay, oh, we're being haunted. Oh, okay, we're leaving it on. Broke my ankle. Oh no. Yeah. I tripped over, I assume my own foot. Oh. It just like. Are you sure it was your own foot? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so sorry. All right. Well, that's the end We're of the haunted. Podcast. I have to move. <laughs> I'm changing my name. I'm leaving the country. This shit happens like all the time when we're recording. I feel like that smoke detector goes off. Or if Does we're like it? talking it about. It happened in a long time though. I know. I feel like it's reminding us. Oh my God. Yeah. I kind of oh, fucked up my ankle. No. Oh no. Do you need oh. to ice it? No, I think it'll be okay. I also missed a spot shaving. <laughs> <laughs> Just shit's going wrong <laughs> left and right. Oh. So before. The beeper rudely interrupted us. There's not even a toilet up in that room. So clearly no one was staying up there. That's really weird. Although I, too, have stayed in a place that did not have a toilet. That's true. <laughs> that is true. It wasn't a hotel, though, right? No, it was this apartment. <laughs> and we had to go and use the apartment downstairs. Yeah. Glamorous. Well, legend has it. That another rejected bride is in the building. Why are, why are there so many rejected brides? That's why I'm like, maybe you shouldn't go there. Oh, my God. 
I'm so upset right now. This one went on a shopping spree with the would-be groom's plastic. Oh, well. Which, like, get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as one does. And this was, like, in the 80s or 90s. Like, oh. late 80s or 90s. Okay. There wasn't an exact date. But it was more recent than the, than the other one. Okay. So we've got, like, an old-timey and a slightly more modern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I guess she learned that the clichéist cliche is true. Money cannot, in fact, purchase the happiness. Oh, no. I mean, I don't know. I'm willing to test it out. Like if anyone wants to, you know, give me the money part, I can tell you how it goes. I just want to try for (laughs) science. For science. Yeah. You know, I'm a scientist at heart. But this poor almost bride, just like the last, was too overcome with heartache and took her own life in one of the rooms at the dress school. Oh, okay. So I don't know if maybe she was there and she was sad and maybe she was feeling the other, the first bride, like feeling her sadness still there and like maybe it like attached to her. And I hate to think that though. (laughs) I hate to think that also. Maybe, maybe the other chick wanted to like, Another scorned bestie, you know, so they can like spill the tea together. Mm, I mean, like, I get it. At tea time. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my God. Fucking tea time. I want. I want that. We can have our own tea time. Yeah. I feel like we needed some tea today. (laughs) You know what I mean? Okay. Anyway. Okay. There is one more soul who never left the hotel. God damn it. And I'm not just talking about the life-size portrait in the lobby or the literal sculptures of his head on the roof. (gasps) The one, the only, Colonel Jesse Driscoll. Oh, my God. Did you see the roof? You have to go back and look at the roof. Oh, God. There's his head. I don't want to. It's so funny. Oh, my God. Why? (gasps) Ew. I hate that. Why is his head on the top of the build? That's so fucking creepy. Yeah, I say on the roof. It's kind of like on a peak. I don't know what but, that's called. I mean, called. it's on the roof. Yeah. yeah. It's I, not just like thrown up onto the roof. But it's like. <laughs> What's in the box? <laughs> it's on a pointed like peak. Oh, no. Oh, there's the portrait. Oh, do you find the portrait? <laughs> it's life size. I think I said that. <laughs> I feel like that's bigger than life size maybe maybe he just you know got his dimensions mixed up (laughs) (laughs) such a man thing to do (laughs) so he makes himself known most often by the scent of cigar smoke which i know you will just love (laughs) you it was rare to see him without a cigar in his life so makes sense for that to be true in his afterlife as well live your best afterlife bro Oh, shit. The property is non-smoking now, of course. But one night, a security guard tried to find the source of the cigar smoke he smelled and then heard a voice out of nowhere asking him for matches. He couldn't find anyone around or any explanation for the smell, but especially the voice. I was going to say, he's like looking around for like, who's smoking a cigar? Yeah. And I, my first thought was fucking narc. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean... I don't like the smell of cigar smoke. <laughs> and I still was like, oh, fuck that guy. It's kind of his job. Security <laughs> it's kind guard, of his job. You know? Yeah. Well, I take that back. In my head, I was thinking mm, a cigar is not threatening security. But like, I guess if you accidentally start a fire. Yeah, I guess so. It is a pretty old building. Yeah. Smokey the bear. But that security guard, he quit after that. (laughs) Oh. He was so scared that he could not find the source of this voice because someone talked to him and he just like couldn't, he couldn't find out who it was. He was like, no, I'm, no. He's like, um, you know what? No, I'm out. Hard pass. I am a security guard shaped hole in the wall. (laughs) Which is not that different from a Caitlyn shaped <laughs> hole in the wall. Just Maybe like taller. Taller. And then also he may have like, you know, the accessories. Like he's got like a taser or something. I just see him like 
throwing it, like throwing the taser or whatever. He has his badge and just like running out. <laughs> runs out. Oh, oh my God. A guest was staying in one of the colonel's favorite rooms and woke up to a man in his room smoking a cigar. Oh. They both seemed confused when they caught each other's eye. And once the light flipped on, the strange man vanished, leaving only a final puff of smoke. What? I don't know. Yeah. No. I, so he only saw him when it was dark and then he flipped on the light I don't, and it was gone. But no. there was just smoke left. Uh, just a little evidence of, you know, uh, the apparition that was. <laughs> I really hate that. I don't <laughs> like it when they like poof away. Poof. Driscoll left quite an impression on two famous rockin' women. Oh. Annie Lennox. Do you oh, know who that shit. is? You know yeah. who that is. Uh -huh. Okay. This is going to be important for you to know this. So Annie Lennox says that he chose an outfit for her while she was in the shower. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. So there wasn't any other details, but I'm picturing she like got out of the shower, smelled this famous cigar smoke and like an outfit fell off the hanger or something, you know, like he maybe had knocked one no, down. No, he like laid it on the bed. I know. See, people, <laughs> people say that, but there's no other information. Like she didn't elaborate. Yeah. But I'm like, I can't, I'm having a hard time okay. picturing clothes laid out on a bed for her. Yeah. But maybe. But you guys, it's fine. L listen, I'll just call her later and report <laughs> back. Because, like, we're totally on a first name basis. Do you like how I said that deadpan? Yeah, I like, love that. I'm just like, totally serious. Can you tell her hi for me? Yeah, okay. totally. Love your work. Yeah. Big fan. <laughs> Super fan. Either way, I bet she wasn't having any sweet dreams that night. Oh! oh! <laughs> <laughs> See why I said it was going to be important? Okay. Yeah. Lead singer of Concrete Blonde, which I'm sorry, I've never heard of them. They're like an 80s chick oh. band, rock chick band. I was going to say, I feel like I've heard of them. I don't really know them. I haven't. I apologize. I, I know them now. Okay. So the lead singer wrote a song about Colonel Jesse Driscoll okay. called Ghost of a Texas Ladies Man. <gasps> And you have to play it right now. It's on Spotify. Okay. Oh, boy. She gives me bro card <laughs> vibes. And I definitely sent the link to Disturbingly <gasps> Pragmatic. And I was like, is this not fucking bro card? Shut the fuck up. Okay, hold on. I got to turn on my volume. Great. I'm actually a ghost because I died. <laughs> I'm dead. It's so good. Yes, good is definitely the word I was going to use. We are adding it to the next playlist. Oh my God. For sure. Okay, great. You're the, playlist the playlist that <laughs> I have nothing to do with ever. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna oh my God, the one I'm so song. excited, Cassie. You're going to make a playlist? I can. <gasps> yeah, you have to now. What uh, should it be about? Idiot. What, the theme, ghost songs. <laughs> yeah, ghost. ghosty. That's perfect because it's almost, you know, the spooky spook. Of yeah. Spooky spook seasons. So. Yeah. It's okay. It's almost that time. Get ready for it, Patreon. It's coming. Yeah. Start. I'm going to, I'm looking at my watch and I'm tapping my wrist like, let's do this. <laughs> let's go. Well, see, we ended on a very good note, very light, very fun, very happy. I'm not happy because <laughs> she said that her towel was on the floor. And I'm like, are you for real? You're a filthy fucking farm animal. I know. That's not where I left it's it. Really Why gross. is it even on the floor in the first place? Maybe she said it was on the floor and she didn't le She left it on a hanger. And she's like, why is it on the floor? I feel like she needs to really clarify because I'm judging her. That might go with my theory about the Annie Lennox outfit where it just was oh. on the floor. Oh. Ooh, evidence. In he, just, he just throws shit on the floor. He's just like, nah. So they think that like maybe he's doing something nice and putting out an outfit for Annie Lennox. And he's like actually just an asshole. He's just... A just man throwing her shit on the floor. <laughs> he's he's just a man. <laughs> yeah, ghost of a man. 
There's always something on the floor. Yeah. (laughs) I do it too. I'm just saying. It's funnier when you make fun of men. It really is. I am Kenneth. Okay. I am Kenneth. I love that. I love that. All right. Well, there's one last thing I want to say before we head to the tarot. Do it. There is a book and it's by Monica Ballard and it's called True Haunted Tales of the Driscoll Hotel. And I was not able to get it in time for this episode, but I was thinking maybe if there's any new information in there, we would do a little Patreon bonus. Ooh. Yeah. I love that. Is that that a good idea? Okay. Yeah. So I will order it and then, you know, we'll let you guys know if there's any additional deets from Mrs. Ballard. As indie podcasters, we love to show our support of other awesome shows, so stay tuned for the promo we've got to share with you this week. Let's show them some love. You can find their info in our show notes. Question for the world. Am I doing this right? Yeah, a ton of stuff is happening here. Good and not so good and downright nasty. It can be frustrating and overwhelming out there thinking that you are the only one feeling like you have less power in the world full of should haves and guardrails. It can feel like you have less power over your own choices, your future, and less control over how you're allowed to show up in the world. We are oftentimes told that our voice doesn't matter and that you're just supposed to live this way because, well, that's what society tells you you're supposed to do. And that's why we created We've Got It All Wrong, a podcast that takes the time to discuss the issues that do not support human existence, which is like everything, and leaves you with ways to take back control of your power. From our toxic culture, the environment, queerness, healthcare, and self-improvement, we hit it all. And we're not running out of topics ever. In our unhumanistic society, we need to not only vent, but also educate ourselves and take action. Each episode, we will chat on a topic, provide you the facts and stats, and leave you with tools and skills to implement in your lives so that you can break free from the matrix. But don't go thinking that this is just about you. We are all on our journey, including us. We are always learning and growing, and we are so stoked to be able to do this together with all of you. Laugh with us, cry with us, and get angry with us. This is your space to break down while breaking it down. I'm Sam. And I'm Che. And this is We've Got It All Wrong. We're two queer millennials navigating through all that is wrong with society and leaving you with ways to be your own catalyst for change. Follow us on Instagram at We've Got It All Wrong. And remember, practice makes progress. Doing your best is the best that you can do. And fuck society society standards. standards. Bye. Bye. You guys, we're We're back. back. And don't worry. We did get more wine. Well, of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so can we address the elephant in the room? The big gray. Which is obviously my fabulous hat (laughs) that I literally bought for Austin trip thinking it'll keep the sun off my face. Even though I don't wear hats. I never wear hats. Yeah. And Cassie, can you tell me exactly how many times that I wore this hat in Austin? And maybe once in the hotel room to show me how cute it looked. Yes. And then again at the airport <laughs> yes. when I slept in it. Like at, like so, Patreon. It's perfect. They have massage chairs at uh, the airport in Austin. So I like really wanted to just take a picture of you <laughs> sleeping in the massage chair. I kind of assumed that you and or Chris did. I didn't. I was very tired too. I curled up in one of the little waiting chairs at the airport and fell asleep. But then I had a whole row to myself on both flights and it was amazing. I don't know what I did to deserve that kind of luck, but I am so grateful for it. Yeah. That that looked awesome for for you. Yeah. I'm I like get teary-eyed <laughs> thinking about it cuz it was so cool. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> okay, Driscoll Hotel. We're finally getting to it. And it's this card right here. I can see it poking out. And this is the one I want. Three of sticks, which is wands, upside down, reverse. Remember how I always used to say upside down and you're like, (laughs) in the reverse. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's not like you didn't know that that was the, like, terminology. You just would get excited and you'd be like, upside down. (laughs) Upside down. I thought it was quite charming. So three of wands, our keywords are creativity and skill, self-expression, growth, competence, and manifestation. I was thinking like um, 
Oh my gosh, <gasps> the music that was made from it, you know, Shh. from the ghost story. Okay, listen to this. Now is the time to show the world what you can do. You've worked hard to develop your talents and have confidence in your abilities. You feel passionately about what you do and believe you can inspire others. Express yourself, Cassie. Mr. Driscoll. Uh-huh. But I started to read the first sentence of the upright interpretation. Mm. You've developed a project, business, creative endeavor, or other venture, and now you're ready to share it with others. Oh, okay. Definitely Mr. <laughs> Driscoll. Got some of that energy in there. Okay, and there is an extra excerpt. So I'm going to read that before I read the reverse. Hidden alliances work to move you into your authentic vocation as soon as you begin to commit to it. Hmm. Hmm. I guess he just wasn't committed enough. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> not. He was committed repeatedly. <laughs> he was committed to the wrong things, maybe. Yeah, I think that's kind of the the message, right? Yeah. Because he would sort of rise to a certain level and then maybe more so than just like it not being the right opportunity, his vices <laughs> sort of, you know, caused some challenges for him in his life. You still have work to do before you go public with your ideas. Holy shit. He went okay. public too soon. Mm -hmm. Remember I yeah. said it was too soon. Bro, IPO, that's a big deal. <laughs> What's IPO? Initial public offering. It's oh. like for stock, but. <laughs> Not just a hat rack. Uh, ooh, ooh, but today it is also a hat, <laughs> hat rack. <laughs> ooh. Perhaps you could benefit from honing your skills. Some areas of an undertaking still need clarification. <laughs> Or you may need to win the support and blessing of others in order to advance. Mm. 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 In a question about money, this card can mean the financial support you need isn't there at this time. I mean, it was, but then it quickly, quickly went away. <laughs> yeah. So this next part, you might have to work extra hard for a while to make ends meet. Damn. Be prudent in spending. He was not. <laughs> yeah. Sort of like his fatal flaw, mm -hmm. I would argue. In a reading about work, the reverse three suggests you're not ready to market your project slash ideas. You feel passionately about what you're doing, but you still have to convince other people to get on board. For artistic people, this card advises don't give up your day job yet, mm. which I will just say I don't love that energy. For like, us. Don't give up your day job of being a <laughs> cattle baron to start running a hotel. I just immediately directly like internalize everything. And I'm like, oh, it's also picking up energy from us. So no. that means. <laughs> Wrong. No, this is Driscoll energy yeah. for sure. Okay. Well, you know, earlier I did ask you a very important question. You did. I did. I said, listen, we have these same microphones as Em and Christine from, and that's why we drink so I have to assume it's just a matter of time before we reach that level of success. Yes. The microphone. Like tomorrow? Directly correlates <laughs> with your success. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think so. In a reading about love, you may feel strongly about a partner, but aren't ready to, aren't ready yet to make a commitment. Or the other person may not be as emotionally invested as you are. Hmm. Texas ladies, man. Ooh. Yeah. I guess he was, I don't, I cannot remember if I talked about it, but he made himself known to women most of, most often, like in certain ways. Like Oh, like in the haunting. Yes. Maybe, I was yeah, like, not in real life, but. Ma, I, I was thinking like, what does that mean in old timey speak? You know, made himself yeah. known to women mostly. I was trying to <laughs> delicately say maybe he was a little gropey. Ew. <laughs> Not in person. Not in person. Yeah, the ghost I mean, life. Either way, though, if you're if you're gropey as a ghost, like I have yeah. to assume that was part of your mo in life. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't want to make assumptions though. But um, listen, <laughs> when it comes to creepy gropey men, I I'm gonna make wild assumptions, <laughs> and I don't know, just deal with it. All right, we'll see you soon. Patreon yeah. live. Yeah. 23rd of September. Yeah. That's two weeks from today, but I mean, 
not when you're watching this video, but when we're recording it. Yeah, I mean, roughly two weeks. Just put it on the calendar so you don't have to think about it, yeah. you know? Do we have a time yet? Did we decide? I think we said two o'clock. Two o'clock. Yeah, okay. I don't know. We'll po We're, we're going to be posting some reminders and things. If you loved listening to that tarot read and want to see it, become a member of the Patreon where a video of every tarot reading is uploaded with the ad-free version of the episode every week. That's going to be really important. Yeah. Just wink, wink, FYI. Those videos typically have a lot of extras in them that we cut out of the regular episode because we are together a shenanigan. And a half. And there's a lot of stuff that we cut out. Sometimes. But, not, yeah. <laughs> but the Patreon is so lucky and they get to see it all. Yeah. We also might have some spoilers in those videos too. I yeah. So. I mean, definitely there's 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 almost always spoilers or we're something. Like, we're like Taylor Swift. We like to Easter egg around, you Ooh, know? We do. We, we do. We are exactly like Taylor Swift. Yeah, just like her. Patreon is a monthly subscription with a range of price points and benefits. Every member gets a personalized welcome card, a shout out in an upcoming episode. And because I forgot last time and I can see the intensity on your face, <laughs> they also get a mini tarot reading in their welcome card. Ooh. Holy fucking shit. I'll never forget to mention it again. I <laughs> cannot. I embarrassed you. I mean, I was like, don't you forget every single time? And Mostly. you're like, yeah, but like this time it was you. That's why we make a good team, I think. <laughs> when one of us forgets, the other one remembers. And we're just going to go with that. Yeah. There's also exclusive bonus episodes and so much more. Sometimes we send little goodies after, you know, a big event. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We literally were just working on that. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> wow. That's a glimpse into my brain. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> if you can't support us monetarily, though, no worries, because some of the easiest ways to support us, help us out a little bit, are absolutely free. Tell everyone and anyone you come into contact with about us. Like, I don't know, maybe you're at the bank and you just tell them about it. Or... Maybe you go to the bank and someone tells you about our show because apparently that has happened. Hi, bank people. Hello. We heard. Yeah. Or you can leave us a five-star review on any platform. For our birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any true crime, paranormal, or witchy stories to submit for our listener appreciation episodes, Creepy People Chronicles, which we just had one last week. Yes. Where we got a coupon code for an Etsy shop. Uh, you're welcome. Go to the show notes. I mean, not because we like really did anything, but <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. Please email us at pnwhauntsandhomicides at gmail.com or use our handy Google contact link in the episode description. You're always welcome to remain anonymous, but also like, if you want to tell us like where you're from and like, I mean, at least your first name and then also like maybe just like all of the details that be great, <laughs> but you don't have to. You can make up a name. Yeah. Make up. Oh, I like that. Make up a name. Yeah. And remember, your stories do not have to be from the Pacific Northwest if you'd like to share. They could be from Austin, Texas. <gasps> have you seen Colonel Jesse Driscoll in your room? Did he pick out an outfit for you or throw your towel on the floor? Are you a CEO of cows? <laughs> Cow CEO. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know. Yeah. Also send us a steak. I want. Okay. So we've done like alien cow stuff. I want like a ghost cow, like a actual like, ghost cow, like a oh. phantom mooing. No, I don't think I want that. I think no. I eat enough red meat that I don't want that. No, thanks. Follow us on all of the socials if you don't want to miss out on photos of our tarot cards, our beautiful altar setups, and a lot of backstage shenanigans, especially when we go on trips. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we might occasionally take a picture of where we hide something. So, just oh, yeah. so you know. 
you can find our website and our link tree in the description of this episode to check out all of the fun that we have to offer. And also, if you just find the link tree, but you can't find our website, the link tree has our website. (laughs) And the website doesn't have our link tree. Uh, No, it links to everything else, though. (laughs) Under God's green earth. All over. All of the things. We try to make it really, really, really easy. We try to make it so hard for you not to find us and love us. Have Have a a creepy creepy ass day. day. See See you you next next Tuesday. Tuesday. I, hmm. Okay. That was my best Reba impression. (laughs) Reba. Reba. I wrote super fun, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> super fun, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to casually Google corn casserole so that I remember to find a recipe because yeah. I fucking, my God, looking at it right now, I'm just like, oh my God. Stop looking at it. You're getting distracted. I know. I'm very easily distracted. If you're a frequent PNW Haunts and Homicides listener, you probably already know we're Birdie Ambassadors. We wanted to take a quick moment to tell you a little bit more about this awesome product. Birdie is the modern personal safety alarm made for women by women. In a situation where you feel threatened or unsafe, you can simply activate Birdie's loud siren and flashing light to create a diversion. Birdie is perfect to carry anytime because the device is lightweight and comes in a variety of colors. So important. Use our ambassador link and coupon code PNW Haunts and Homicides to receive 10% off your purchase. Like our social media handles, the coupon code is all spelled out, no special characters. You can find the link and promo code in our show notes or PNW Haunts and Homicides link tree. Have, Have a, a safe, safe ass day! day.